James Fleming, Fleming the snapper. Uh, James, rough season for you, man. Uh, tore your cartilage at the uh, Midlands. Knee. Knee. LCL. LCL. Just a partial. Partial tear. Uh, you default out there. Um, and then the rest of the season, you're trying to get back into it to qualify for the tournament, build wins. You're able to do that. I mean, I watched, uh, was it the Peppelman? I didn't miss any competition. Peppelman match here. Yeah. That, that's a match where I saw you, you're up like 11, 12, nothing more, and then you pin him? Uh, no, I didn't pin him. I just was up 12, nothing. My first 12. match against, no, I didn't, I didn't pin anybody here. Didn't pin anyone here? No. Nah. Any techs? Uh, first match against Purdue. Purdue, you had a tech, Churcher. Yep. Then uh, in the All-American run, you have uh, Dimas. Yeah. Really good on his feet, super explosive. How are yep. you able to negate someone like that? Uh, I was just staying. I was looking for my attacks. I mean, that's what got me here, actually. Got me to where I was. It was a rough tournament, and, uh, you know, not being 100% here is kind of rough. I mean, I've been there before, and I knew it was, wasn't going to be easy. So, uh I stayed what I'm good at, and I got in every match I won. I got the first takedown, so, so I was I was looking to attack really, and looking to find my takedowns, and uh, you know start off up four or five nothing. You know take a guy down to his back, and I was able to do that in like three matches here, three four matches. So coming up four or five nothing, and then getting a guy rolling to his back a lot, that I mean, it makes the day a lot easier. The snapper notorious for you know going hand fight in the first period, maybe yeah. giving up. Take a ton or two, right. and then choose and top. Right. You know, to change that game, be injured all year, and come here and take eighth place. That's probably that's something that's pretty amazing when I talk to you about it. I mean, yeah, there was choices in like the Minnesota match to cut the guy in the third period because I literally had nothing left, like my arms, my legs. I want to get. I practically want to be carried off the mat. I was so exhausted uh, from like lack of being on the mat, trying to get healed for this tournament, trying to. Uh, trying to take a whack at winning it and it, you know it stinks that you know I didn't get get to where I wanted to be but I, f I feel confident like what I did and I I'm happy with it uh, considering the circumstances. Being a two-time All-American I mean you've yeah. had you've wrestled three head coaches mm -hmm. and a lot of turnover at Clarion with head coaches you know guys going on to bigger better things you know supposedly right. going to other schools when you look at you know what Clarion is and, and what you've done there you know, do you, are you proud of that? Of those accomplishments? Yeah, I mean, uh, I was informed last night that I was fourth all time in Clarion history, tied with Mark Angle. Uh, so I guess that's pretty cool. People are telling me it's cool right now. I don't really care, uh, but I guess down the road I probably will. Um, and just just being able to like carry on that you know tradition and stuff at Clarion, and hopefully you know we got a really good recruiting class coming in. I hope they you know keep on carrying on that tradition and you know build on what I did. I mean, there's a lot a lot of room to gain still for Clarion. You're probably the meanest guy in the country. How do you know as a coach? What are you gonna do to translate that into athletes, man? I mean, I was like, I wanted to say hi to you a couple times. You know, you're warming up, but you're so intense warming up, and then I go out and watch what you do. You're the meanest guy in the country. You might not be the most talented guy in the country, but being the meanest guy in the country, how do you get your athletes to be mean if you coach? I mean, I, the one thing I really embraced this year was letters told me to have fun. And I mean, I'm aggressive, but I'm not going out there to really be mean. I'm wrestling my style, and I'm an aggressive person, and that's the way I go out there. But I'm really going out there, and this year, I was really, especially at this tournament, I was just trying to have fun. I mean, it was the last last tournament in my life for uh, folk style wrestling. It's been like 15, 16 years in the sport. So, you know, it was just, I was trying to enjoy myself at the same time. Uh, and that's more what I was concentrating on. You know, the aggressiveness just comes naturally with the style of wrestling I do. And uh, to translate that into athletes that I have down the road, I mean, just teaching them the pressures and teaching them how, you know, the fight it takes to get to the top and you know to fight through some of the adversities you feel in life and some of the adversities you end up on having on the mat and just you know really instilling like the knowledge of you know what it takes to you know get here and the motivation you need to have no matter what their style is just fighting yep just fight i mean that's how you get to the top and i've been fighting my whole life and i'll keep on fighting until i'm at the top of the next thing all right, Fleming, you got anything else for me? Uh, no, that's about it. All right, it's been a pleasure watching you, man. One of the more fun careers to watch. And uh, hopefully we'll see you down the road coaching or fighting, all right? Yep.